This is Nice Matthew. I hope you're doing well. I just wanted to pop in and just talk a little bit about the energies that we'll be experiencing this week. We do have a kind of a big week because on Monday, December 14th, we're going to have the last eclipse of 2020. And that's going to be in, it's on the um, axis of Sagittarius and Gemini. What that means is that the energy that we're having from this particular eclipse is seeding us with something that we'll plant and then we'll sort of see bloom in May 2021 because they're all in the same cycles. As well as a few planets like Mars is going to be changing this week as well as Saturn are going to be making a, a few changes. So I thought it was energy that was important to talk about, just some things that we could discuss for the week. And uh, so let's get into it. So the final eclipse is going to be happening, as I said, on Monday, December 14th. I'm recording today on the 13th, and uh, I'll upload it so you guys will have it for Monday. It's going to be happening in the gate 11, which is 23 degrees Sagittarius. It's also what's called four south. Now, there's a series of eclipses, and Bernadette Brady has written a whole book called The Eagle and the Lark, which, and this is what she said about this particular eclipse. Now the last time this type, this eclipse from this particular series came in 1984. So it's, it, it hasn't happened for a while. And before that it was 1948. So these types of eclipses are in the same cycle and it won't happen again for a while in the future. So they have a particular theme or an energy that comes with them. And it's all written here. It's just, it, it says it's a very emotional energy and really talking about relationships, money, um, and, and basically you can read it all here from a human design perspective. This energy is all about searching for light in darkness. And I think that because of the way 2020 has been, I think many of us could be finding that a difficult task to do to find the light in the darkness. So like all um, human design energies, this energy can go very right or very wrong. And, it, you know, it is a it, it is a plethora of ideas, a lot of ideas. And that's the most basic perspective of it. This is energy that is connected to the gate 56, which is all about seeker. So we have a seeker and not necessarily finding this is a person who collects stories of of um, things that have happened. And this is where memories for stories come in into play. The gate 11 and the gate 26 are being active as well because right now we have the nodes and the nodes are in the gate 26 and also the gate 45. Now, because this is a solar eclipse, this is happening. Um, any eclipse is basically a full moon or a, a new moon that happens very close to a node and it has to be within a certain number of degrees. So if it's a new moon and it happens near a node, that would be a solar eclipse. And if it's a full moon and it happens near a, a node, then that would be a lunar eclipse. Now we did have a lunar eclipse on the 30th of November. So now we have the solar eclipse and this one is interacting with the same nodal energy focus on the gate 26. Now, when we talk about the gate 26 and mixing it with the gate 11, um, we have to remember that the nodes are considered kind of a karmic energy and some people call them the nodes of fate. And sometimes people talk about karma and with the South node, it's really about the potential gifts that we come into this world or this incarnation with. And then um, with the solar eclipse happening on the South node, it's usually some kind of an ending because it's old and we're always trying to move towards the North node, which is, is the new things, the things that we don't know about as much and the things we're, that we're here to learn. I mean, that that's the, the concept that a lot of people say. So when we're doing that, we're moving towards the new. And so it, it remember that it's all about um, when we're moving away from older energy or older themes, it's all about closing one door. But when the one door closes, you know, the theory is, is that there's always a new thing that a new door that opens. And when this new door opens, we're going to be seeded with given a seed of some sort to grow something new. And usually what's leaving us is something that's um, outgrown or something that we've sort of had come, it's come to its expiration date. It could be a friendship or a relationship. It could be a job. It could be um, a way of being, a way of thinking. It really depends upon where it falls in your particular, um, your particular chart or your particular natal chart or, you know, that type of thing. So, I mean, this is the kind of things it's, it's the ending of a cycle. And um, it, when we have the South node in the gate 26, we have a movement away from the material um, focus, like a lot of focus on resources, getting more and more and more. And there's, this has been a big focus that we have had up until I think 2020, where suddenly 
everything came to a, a halt, everything came to a standstill. And then we had to start to refocus and, and, and say, okay, you know, we can't chase after all those things that we've been chasing after the more principle um, because we, we can't go out and shop or we can't do these types of things because we have shutdowns. And then unfortunately people um, no longer had jobs and, and a lot of things changed and our perspective of what we needed in our life changed as well. So when we talk about moving away from the gate 26, that, that sort of energy, we could talk about moving away from this focus in the material. Um, and also, um, you know, looking at what do we really need in our lives? What, what is it that is most important in our lives? And I think we can refocus on this concept of maybe that new, um, you know, really expensive handbag isn't something that we need after all, or that new car or that fancy um, new piece of jewelry. Maybe what we need is something uh, is to look around and see you know, the people that are, are in our lives and, and, the, and the gifts that we have that are right in front of us. And I think that it really does put a perspective on um, this idea of uh, seeing beyond the material and looking at what is truly important to me. If, if everything stopped and the world stopped moving and there was nothing left in this moment other than what I have right here, right now, what would be the most valuable thing to me? And, and usually it's, it's the people, it's the people that matter the most to you. And I think that, you know, if there's anything we can try and do is know that there's been a lot of division in this, in this uh, year of 2020, as well as everything else that has happened. And I think that maybe this energy can get us to start to come together to start to see beyond those things that don't matter as much as as real as as human interaction because of any, of all things that we've lost in 2020 it is human interaction so now that is going to take more of a focus on what's important to us for the holiday season because we're moving into the holiday season um in in a lot of places um you know it's going to be a lean one for a lot of people and it's going to be completely different than it has been before and maybe there won't be money to buy the gifts that you usually buy and, and those types of things. And, and, you know, coming from a perspective where, I mean, you know, I had a lot of lean Christmases or lean holidays in my life. And I, I guarantee you, those are the ones that are most memorable to me because I think that it was, it was just in that moment where you, you just realized that it wasn't about the presence. It wasn't about those types of things. It really was about just being with family and, and walking down the street and looking at lights or, or just being together and just you know sharing sharing those memories together and i think that if we can keep that in, in mind for these holidays and not get stressed out about what we can't do and see what ca what can we do what what uh, what are we able to enjoy in our lives and if it means that we have zoom calls and we don't get to spend time with with our relatives or with the people that we love then we can look at saying, yeah, you know what, maybe it's not going to happen now, but maybe it will happen in the future. And, and just seeing things from a different perspective. Maybe there's not as many presents, maybe there's not that human interaction, but appreciating that it will come again in the future. And I think that that's the energy that we're sort of going to be talking about, or this kind of energy that we're, that we'll, we'll be seated with, to see that, you know, Maybe in May, maybe we'll be having more interaction with people. Maybe we'll be shifting out of this uh, time of being away and start to connect more than we were before. And if we combine the energy of the gate 26 with the energy of the gate 11, we can see that the peace and trying to find light within these dark, darker situations. I mean, if you look at this card, you can see the light coming behind the, um, the dandelion and it's all these... Um, and, and we can imagine that all these seeds are ideas, but they're also wishes that we can sort of blow on that. If you haven't blown on a dandelion before, after it's seeded, basically um, a lot of people think that you blow on it and you can make a wish and, and the wishes come to uh, come true or, or that type of thing. So it is seeing the light in, in the world that we're in right now. And when we do see the light, then it just makes life easier. Um, it, le it makes the burden a little bit easier to carry when, it, when we're carrying our burdens. And Mercury is also in the gate 26. And, uh, with Mercury in the gate 26, there's a good chance that people are going to be talking about integrity. They're going to be talking about finding solutions where everybody wins, like a win-win situation where it's not taking advantage of somebody so that you can gain something. So those kind of energies. And also 
um, this idea that um, when we all benefit, then we all win. And it's, it, it is more of a balanced energy. So those type, types of things might be something that we're, we're looking at. We also have the 1222, which is in the earth and also Neptune. But we have that full energy. And the full energy is, it's a very creative energy and it's going to be activated. And so um, if we look at the gate 12 is in the earth, it's going to ground us. And the gate 12 is this, it's all about um, this idea of finding the right mood and the grace to cope and deal with the world that we live in. Neptune has been in the gate 22 for all of 2020. And it is all about this idea of grace under pressure, under, under, um, dire circumstances, finding the grace to understand that um, we can get through this. So if we look at the year of 2020, and we can look at it as a year where there was um, put, like potentially a lot of loss for a lot of people, and, and, and in, in all different ways. And we know that everybody has in some way been touched, and how much of an impact that has been is really uh, you know, based on everybody in their personal experience. But I think that I don't, I don't think there's anybody, like I said before, and I've said this several times that can go through and say, yes, 2020 didn't mean anything to me, or I never really learned anything, or it had no impact on my life because I'm sure it did. So we know that a lot of people have lost and what, what have we gained in 2020? What have we found? What strength and perseverance have we have we discovered in who we are and how we move through the world and how the how we fa face the challenges that were in our path and yet we continue to move through them, and if we lock that in with the gate forty five, ultimately no matter what we're doing, we're always moving towards the north node, and this is as a collective. And so when we talk about the north node, the energy we're looking at is talking about leadership, but this is leadership that's serving the people. It is not a leadership that is based on the leader being propped up and cared for and, and taken care of and all those kind of things, but yet they don't give to the people. They don't take care of the people. We're, this is where we're moving. We're moving to a leadership that is beneficial to all. And, and, and this is the most important thing. And so that's the energy we're moving toward. And that sounds like a pretty nice energy um, where, you know, the people are going to win something as well as 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 uh, the people who are in, in uh, the leadership positions you know because if it's only a one-way street where everybody's supporting the leader and saying you know you're great and whatever and the leader is just taking all this abundance and going off and doing their own thing that's not that's not how it works there's no balance in that energy and so this is where we're moving towards finding balance in that type of energy with Venus in the gate 14, there might be some lucky energy that we see around. And, and I talked about this in the transits for um, December for 2020. There, there's potential for seeing resources that we didn't know were there or having this little tiny lucky breaks that will sort of set us up for a better, a better experience or maybe that little thing that will just change, change the dynamic just enough so that we can sort of get through and feel, yeah, you know what? Life has been pretty rocky, but at least I got this little bit of light and it will actually help me push to the other side. Um, we can imagine that if we look at 2020, it's like you're at this, the, the point where you're a runner, like you have a runner um, and they have, they talk about the runner's high, but in order to, for you to get to that, to that high, to get to that good place where you start to feel like, yeah, I can do this. It feels good. I'm finally in that space of feeling pretty good. You have to go through a really, a lot of hard work to get there. And so this is where we're at. We're getting to that point where we can see the top of the mountain that we've been climbing for the whole of 2020. And yet we still have a little bit more to go and we're going to make it, but we just have to really hold on and know that we do have that little bit of strength left to get to the top of the mountain. On December 15th, we have a big move where finally Mars is going to be moving out of the gate 51 and it's into gate 42. Now the gate 51 is all been, it's all been about, there is the level of, we call it shock, um, but we can also talk about it as an initiating energy, which has initiated us into something new, in a new way of looking at the world, in a new way of being, in a new way of seeing how you, how your life is and where you want to be going forward. And it, it is a very powerful energy and very impactful. And yet it never leaves you the same after it's gone. In some way you will be shifted. And 
you know, we can, some people will have bigger shifts and because it is half of the channel of the shaman, which is a 2551. And that's all about these really shocking um, initiations that leave us completely shifted afterwards. And many people have had those and they've had these experiences um, where it's been so impactful that after they're, it's, it's done, they can never go back to who they used to be. It's so much of a change. It's not saying that Mars has done this to everybody, but there are, might be people who are looking at their lives and saying, no, no more. I can't be who I used to be. I can't do what I used to do. And now I need to let go. I think it's super interesting how it's changing gates from the gate 51 this initiating this taking stock of what you have and and sort of being shown a new agenda that you you want to follow and it's moving into the gate 42 and the gate 42 is all about closing cycles the the originating cycle of this um, mars energy began in as and i said this before june 2019 and now we're closing cycles so there's things that are, are are finishing up that we had started back then it could be relationships it could be projects it could be a job it could be so many things now it doesn't come with a a note of negativity or positivity i think it's it's individual to everybody there will be people who will be happy for these cycles to change and people who may not be happy for these cycles to, to change. But again, it will be a personal experience. And it is a big energy change because like I said, because of the retrograde Mars, it's been in the gate 51 for a really long time. So it's nice to get a bit of fresh energy. Jupiter is making its last pass in the gate 60. We've had a lot of energy of uh, back and forth, We've had Jupiter and Saturn playing in this gate of gate 60 and really, you know, pushing the button on the, the world that we live in. And so finally, these guys are saying, yes, we've done our thing and now we're going to leave. But having said that, they're not gone yet. So they're going to have that last little push just before they finish up their cycle because they won't come back. Jupiter will be back in 12 years and Saturn won't be back for about 28 or 29 years. So this is a big energy where they're finally just making that final touch, basically saying, okay, we've gone through, we've shown you all the things that need to be fixed. And we're giving you, you know, guidance on what you can do in the future. Now, it's your job to actually take this guidance, walk forward with it, and start to make the changes that we need. Because when we hit the limits, we know that there's only one thing we can do. We can work within the limits and wait for things to shift and for new beginnings. Because if we look at the energy of the gate 60, we know that it hooks into the gate third, the gate three, and the gate three is all about new beginnings, but difficult beginnings, but new beginnings, and then it goes into the gate 60. So it's a super cyclical energy, and this is one of the most powerful format energies of the human design body, body graph. So that's why we're feeling so much powerful energy in 2020. I mean, there's a lot of other things, of course, but it's, it's one of the de determining factors of how things have really you know, pretty much brought us to a, a stop, a stopping place because there's nothing that's more powerful really than um, Saturn in, in uh, Capricorn and Capricorn is where this gate 60 is and Saturn is the ruler of Capricorn. So it's got its most power in here. So it's going to do its most remembered uh, way of shifting things up that, you know, and as, as it has. Now, they're still going to be remaining in the gate 60 Jupiter and Saturn until 2021. But there is a shift because now it's moving into Aquarius. And that, that's a big deal because when Jupiter gets into Aquarius, Jupiter is much happier in Aquarius. It's, it's, it's like a, a nicer home for it. So you can imagine Jupiter was in, living in a, a place for, in Capricorn and it was a very unhappy place. It wasn't, it wasn't its best self, you could say. It didn't have the power of, of, of bringing the benefits to everybody that, you know, it normally would have based on where it is. And Saturn was its most powerful. Saturn is going to move into Aquarius where it's powerful as well. But now Jupiter has got a little bit of energy to balance it out a bit. So now we're having Saturn isn't running the show anymore. And we also have Jupiter coming in and saying, okay, I'm going to, I'm good. I'm stronger now. I can help out and I can make things a little bit easier for people. And for this last week where 
before Saturn moves into Aquarius, because we know that it's going to be moving on the 18th, as well, Jupiter will be going in into the 29th degree before they move into Aquarius. The 29th degree is called an anoretic degree or is a very powerful degree. And it can cause a lot of this um, sort of just this frenetic energy or this energy of feeling, well, especially with the gate 60, feeling more limited, feeling at the end of your rope, feeling like I can't do this anymore. I, I've had it. I'm done. I just can't do it. But what we have to remember is this. We are at the end of it. We are at seeing, like I said, the tip of the mountain. It's there. We just have to climb a little bit more. And just knowing that the energy is, is almost ready to, to shift. I mean, and that's the biggest thing that we feel. Now, if we look at Uranus, Uranus remains the same. This is really talking about um, continuing to have this new way of taking care of ourselves, this new way of nurturing, this new way of feeding ourselves, this new way of being part of a family. Um, so what are we doing that's different? And yes, it's new and unusual because we are doing things that we never did before. We are forced into a new way of being and that continues on until 2021, but we'll have some new energy coming as well. And Pluto has, has been in the gate 61 for the whole of 2020 and it will continue to be in the gate 61 but ultimately, Saturn and, and um, Jupiter have sort of, I guess you would say, prime the pump for Pluto to come in. And it's basically Jupiter and Saturn showed, every, showed the world, brought the things to light. Where are the problems? What do we have to fix? And so Pluto is going to come in and sort of start to transform and rebuild what we what we need to rebuild like and the thing about pluto is is that when it do, does go into the gate 60 you know there is this point of finding the seed where we have um have we have been changed or we have been forced to change that seed of something new and this is where we're going to find it when pluto comes in and says okay let's build something stronger than we had before you know, because Saturn will touch, will push at things until they fall. And if they do, then we know that they're weak and they need to be re rebuilt. Pluto will come in, give a final push. If there's anything that needs to be pushed down that still isn't working, Pluto comes in, takes it down, and then we start to rebuild. And what is built on the foundation of Pluto is stronger than ever was before. And I forgot to mention that Neptune is now... 22 line two and when we talk about the line two we talk about this energy of something being called out of us and and right now grace is being called out of us so in other words because we're human race grace is something that will help us to be able to push through in the world and yes this is an individual energy and yes this is is about a create creative energy as well but there is this energy of finding the grace. And when we find the grace, we, it's kind of like spread. So if we're basically living in a way that, yes, we're suffering, but yet we still find that seed of hope within all the suffering, then that kind of energy will spread to other people because they can't help but be influenced by that energy. And it's not about in, it's not about inspiring because you're trying. It's 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 about inspiring because you're being. And in into January 2021, we know that Jupiter and Saturn will be leaving the gate 60. The one thing that we have to keep in mind is that the gate 60 is part of um, the format energy. And when we talk about the format energy, that's all about a pressure center. It's down in the pressure center, center and it's uh, down in the root center. And it's all about adrenaline energy. So we have this pressure of adrenaline. Now we also have another pressure center and that's the head, the head center. And the gate 61 is pressure in the head center. So if we, we can imagine we were completely under pressure in 2020. You have it from the head center, you have it from the root center. What's happening is we finally have that release of the gate 60. So now that pressure from the, I mean, we're going to still have some level of pressure because we're going to have the gate 41, but it's a brand new pressure because the gate 60, all the energies of the formats, the 52, uh, the 53, 42, the 63, and also the 952, all of these energies are format energies. And basically they are the, the, where all the beginnings of everything happens. So it, they're very important and powerful energies. 
Yes, Gate 41 that we're going to go into in January 2021 is really about this idea of initiating code on. But there's a lot of fantasy in it, and there's a lot of understanding that it takes a while for it to get to the throat. But with this format energy, it's a it's a super powerful energy, and it really is the end of the end of a cycle because it is the end of the the mandala. It is the end of the human design mandala. So we know that that energy is going to go. So the root pressure, that pressure, that adrenaline, that that the stress, the anxiety, we're going to finally feel a little bit less pressurized like we were for the full of 2020. So that's really something that's wonderful to look at. So again, big things happening this week. We have the eclipse, something to look at, something new, a door closing, a door opening, a new seed being planted. We have the gate 60, it's going to Saturn and Jupiter, both moving out of Capricorn into Aquarius, but a more balanced energy in Aquarius. So we can look at maybe things being a little more balanced. Now the focus may be away from structures and institutions and organizations and that type of thing, moving into anything related to Aquarius, air, internet, um, things like like uh, the the, the uh, humanitarian things. So moving more into that kind of energy with the gate 60. So those are the kind of things that we're moving into. We're going to start to feel a, a change with Mars moving in to finally close up some cycles, close up maybe 2020, like closing the cycle of of uh, what we had and finally moving into energy that's different than the 51. And eventually, like I said, we'll be moving into a new, brand new energy going into Taurus and feeling a little bit different than it has been. So the bottom line is this, yes, we're at that crescendo. We're at that moment where we just feel like we just can't take it anymore. But ultimately a couple steps forward, a few more steps forward, and we will get there. 2020, if anything, will be an energy to remember what we what we learn from it. It's a historical moment that um, many in this life, many who are alive right now, I would be very surprised if we had another historically um, impactful year like we have had in 2020. And I think that 2021, um, I mean, of course, it's not going to all be over and done with and everything is all better and, and back to normal, but there's a potential to start to build something new. And I think that if we can keep that in mind and to know that we're almost there, maybe that's that last little bit of something that we need just to get us to the other side. So that's all I have for you now. And I will be back again soon to um, talk about the transits of uh, 2021 and also a little bit about the conjunction that um, we're going to be having on December 21st between uh, Jupiter and uh, Saturn, and just a little bit more of the energy that we're going to be imprinted with. This is a very dynamic time in, um, in the year. It is the end of the year, but uh, the end of the year is definitely going out with a little bit of fireworks. So uh, stay tuned, and I will see you soon, and I hope you're well, and take care, and bye for now.